as well, to be honest. So Clayton is going to explain that in just a moment. But I think board size, volume, that kind of thing is... Uh, that board question comes up yeah. time and time again yeah, in, the, in the groups and just general questions. Um, people don't know when to change, when to downsize, when to upsize or... Yep. Or anything like that. So let's. Dive so into that tonight one. we're going to answer all those questions. So yep. if you've ever got a volume question or a board size question again, all you've got to do is come back and watch this yep. video. Before we jump into that, if you haven't done it already, then please jump over to YouTube and make sure that you subscribe there. So that is Ombi Surf on YouTube. There is uh, we're going to be putting up some more coaches eye videos very soon. Me and Clayton have been filming some. We're just getting those edited and they'll be ready to go up. So make sure you head over to YouTube. That is Ombi Surf on YouTube. Search us out there, subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. So just for, just give us a quick update on your eye because you're actually looking pretty pretty good today. Your oh, eyes, so this like, is better. two weeks after, after my pterygium, pterygium operation. So it still waters a lot and it kind of, it's a bit blurry. So this one looks a bit sort of puffy and small. Does, it looks so much better than it did, yeah, than it did last week. It's better than it did, hey? mm. but it's mm. still not like great, so. No, and so not only have you had that there done, I found out just a moment ago that on the 25th of March, you're going in to have a hand some operation. More, yeah, having a hand operation. Yeah. Hold your hand up to the camera so that everyone can see. So, so this is, this I've got a condition what's called Dupatron's contractures. What? what? Dupatron's contractures. That sounds like something so, from so Star Wars. Basically, the, the tendons in my hand are all contracting. Okay. So it's like I'm getting scar tissue. And so if I hold this hand up, it's fairly straight. Get my hand out the way, head out the way. And if I hold this one up, uh, that's about as straight as my hand goes on the other one. Uh, and it, 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 it's really weird. Like if you actually, it's, it's, it's a bit freaky to sort of touch, but like yeah. it, it physically won't bend back anymore. Yeah. I mean, I think that you've got like a bionic paddling hand with that, to be honest. Well, like it's, like it's good for paddling, which is fine. But the problem is on some push-ups and pop-ups, I, I can't bend my, like I, I can't bend my fingers straight. Especially this one. Well, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to physically try to bend that straight. It's mm. really, really sore. So, yeah, I'm getting my hand cut open and all the tendons scraped. My hand goes into so, the cast. So, so they cut it open and scrape yeah. the tendons. Scrape the tendons clean. If you're having dinner while you're watching this, I'm really sorry. <laughs> or breakfast, I'm really sorry. And then uh, I go into a hand cast for um, two weeks, almost like a broken arm. So that'll take you to the middle of April. Yep, and hopefully if all the um, the skin heals, then I can go to rehab and learn how to bend my fingers back again. So middle of April, and then you're going to rehab. How long then till you can surf? May I'm surfing regardless. I'm May you're surfing regardless, it. okay. But I'm going to have three months of no surfing, so. Three months. I'm two weeks into my three months, and I'm, I'm, I'm okay for now. When you go back in May is when I'm allowed to go back in, well, I'm, I'm meant to wait until June. But I'm, when you go back in, I'm going to say that that's a green light for me to go back in yeah. again properly as well. So, Although I have been out So we're going to have stuff. to do a lot of our own training outside yeah. of the water to hopefully maintain a sort of surfing level when we get back. So yeah. I'm keen to see how I surf when I get back. Absolutely. Anyway, let's, uh, let's, let's dive into, into tonight's content, which yeah. is all about uh, what do you want to do with first? What do you want to do with paying your dues or do you want to go to board size or are you going to tangle those two things together? as we go through this process. Let's, let's, let's tackle the surfboard debacle first. Okay. Now, how do you want to go about this? Because we've had lots of different questions, or do you want to just just say what you need to say well, about board size? How about I give you some background information from a shaper's point of view? Yeah. So, a lot of guys will come in and order a surfboard and go, hey, I want a 6 -0. And I'll go, okay, like, what are the dimensions? And they go, I don't know, you're the shaver, you do it. So I'm like, oh, I get so frustrated and so irritated. So if you're going to order the 6 -0 for me, these are the type of questions I would need you to answer so that I have enough information to be able to make it that board. So first of all, where do you surf normally? What kind of waves is it? Because it could be a 6 -0 for Hawaii, it could be a 6 -0 for, I don't know, tiny waves in England or something. Mm, yeah. Okay, so it's really important that where are you surfing? Secondly, um, are you tall? Are you short? Are you heavy? Are you slim? Do you have big feet? Do you have small feet? I mean, 
If I make you a very narrow board and you've got a big foot, your toe's going to be hanging over the end, catching rail. <laughs> or, I've just got a really weird vision in my head now. Well, think, think about this. When you make ladies' boards, ladies have tiny feet. So if you make them a really wide board, they're going to struggle to turn the board. Okay, so it's, it's really important knowing these type of things because we're all genetically made differently. Mm. So there's, there's no one magic board that, that kind of fits and suits everyone. So the more information that you can give, the better it is. And that's why I think custom boards are so much better than just getting a generic um, random stock board off the rack. Yeah. Okay. So let, let's go into how models come about or how boards, I don't know, how, how you come up with new models. So say I'm going down to my local and it's knee high for the next month. I'll probably be sitting there going, how can I make my current board go better in these waves? And I'll probably go back home and make two or three models trying to come up with the best board for those kind of conditions. Right. And if I have come up with a model that I'm going, wow, this thing is amazing, I'll go, Ant, you should get one of these. They're really good. But then I'm going to have to get the right length, the right width, and the right thickness for you. Mm. Now, you're a different... I mean, how tall are you? You're six so foot... I'm, so I'm six one... Run about. You're six one. You're about ninety kilograms. Eighty six. Let's not let's not make me heavier. We, I rounded it off. He's ninety kilograms. <laughs> what size shoe are you? What size shoe? Uh, I'm a ten. Ten. Okay. So I'm five ten, seventy five kilograms, and a size nine shoe. Right. Okay. So basically, all I would do is I'd resize the board to give you the right length that you wanted from me because almost everyone knows the right length that they want then depending on how well you surf i'll make the board either wider for more stability or narrower for more turning ability mm. now people that can generate their own speed um if you drive a ride a bicycle fast it starts to stabilize if you ride a bicycle slow it'll wobble so when you surf if you can generate your own speed you can get a narrower board because you can make the board stabilize itself Mm. But if you don't know how to generate speed, you're probably going to be surfing slower. You will need a wider board um, for the stability. Then the last thing that you're looking at is how much or how much strength do you have and how well do you paddle and how confident you are. Because that's got to do with the amount of thickness you have in your board. Without that information, it's, it's very difficult for a shaper to make any on a board. Or a good board at least. So... Um, a lot of people when they order a board they will go to the shaper and, and actually talk themselves up oh I rip, I do this, I start doing airs and I want a board that I can surf top to bottom in the pocket and then you'll often go and see those guys surf and they're real gumbies, they don't know how to surf really well so you, there's a very good chance that I've made them a board that's too high performance for them mm. so because I've made them a high performance board that board has actually made them surf worse However, if they had have told me the real truth, I'm struggling on my turns. I maybe need a board that is a bit more stable, that gives me more time to finish my turns, or something's a bit looser that turns better. Um, the better amount of feedback they could give the shaper, the more sort of accurate that board would be suited towards what their needs. Mm. So having said that, um, it, it drives me nuts because in certain ways, advertising and Facebook and, and, all, and all the marketing that goes into those big board brands mm. often mislead the consumers. So, so what happens is like Firewire will come up with a new design and they'll give it to a guy like Noel Salazar um, to go in yep. and test ride the board. And he'll go, okay, this is the same as what Kelly Sato would write. It's a five foot nine sci-fi and it's got the funny tail on it. And it, it's got this technology and it's glass with this with these special fins and it's going to make me rip. So the guy surfs really, really yeah. well. Yeah, he's like, a really good surfer. Yeah, he he's a, he's a knows what he's doing. So he can put the board on rail and he very quickly gets to kind of feel the boards out. And for some reason, the waves are always pumping when he goes surfing, which irritates me. Because generally when we go surfing, especially if you get a new board, it's guaranteed the surf shit. You very rarely get a board yep. and the waves pump. But anyway, um, that specific board. 
Hang on a bit. I'm, I'm, I'm being told. I'm being told to get off the phone. I'm, I'm actually trying to find the Facebook post. So rather than me going through the computer because I've got the thing on going on here or going through the iPad, I'm trying to find a particular post in the Surf Hacks group. So uh, yes, I will get off the phone, but I'm doing it. I'm doing it for a purpose. Anyway, carry on. Okay, where was I? Oh, um, okay. So that particular board. Let's say. Noel weighs 70 kgs, and then there's this guy who weighs, he's six foot two, he weighs 95 kilograms, and uh, he wants an upsized board. Mm. Okay. They have like volume calculators, and they basically try and make it a little bit easier. But all you do on a volume calculator, I'll, I'll probably go, okay, I ride 5'9, I'll make it 5'10, 5'11, 6'0, and I'll just incrementally just go bigger, 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 bigger. I'm just guessing that someone who walks into the shop is incrementally just bigger, bigger, bigger. But it's not like that because someone might be a little bit shorter, but stockier and heavier. Mm. So he needs more volume, but then he doesn't want the longer board. So often it's very, very difficult. And, and those those incremental upsizes, they aren't like, it's not law. It's not like that's what you should get and that's going to work for you. So it's very important that as a surfer, you know what works for you. Yeah. And you have to go through trial and error to try to figure these things out. Mm. Um, the best thing to do is to often just swap boards with mates in the water and on different days, see how different boards work and then see if your feedback ties in with they, their feedback. And it's the feeling that makes a lot of sense in surfing. And you've got to be able to explain that feeling to the shaper. Yeah. So often... Um, if I'm surfing and say if I ride your board and it goes better than mine, I'll say, can I please borrow your board for an hour? I go back to shape and I measure it up and I try to figure out why it felt a certain way. Right. Yeah. And um, I'll go and try and make one that feels the same or feels better. So we don't have, that's we, really important. We don't have the luxury of being able to just go and quickly jump in the shaping bay and measure it up. Yeah, but you, you can ride a mate's board. And yeah. If it goes good, that model will probably be online. Yeah. The dimensions will probably be online and then you can write those down and almost have like a, a little diary of what works mm. and if you went to another shape you could go okay i wrote this particular board on these particular waves and the the combination works well for me yeah so um that yeah that's really really important so i just want to rewind slightly here yeah because uh, you covered quite a bit in quite a very short space of time and that was a lot of information fired okay, out sorry so the no 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 it's good the so the reason why this conversation came about was because of a post that was put up in the surf hacks group so this is the reason why i was i was on my phone scrolling down through to try, try and find this so i mean the facebook group has been has just been alive with people posting stuff so it took me ages to scroll down and find it but it was all about scaling surfboards yeah uh, and it was uh, Philip Kous Kousas, I or Kousias, hopefully I'm pronouncing your surname right. And so it was when you get a surfboard, uh, so I've heard essentially that these boards were designed to be ridden at, say, a 5.5 five by someone smaller than me. But for my size and skill level, the recommended liters, so it's it's where they say should be should be ridden the same size as a surfer. Yep, okay. So, would, so what Philip wanted to know was so if that person was five five, so the board was five five. If you're six foot, do you just scale everything up in that same way? And you came up with a really good analogy around this, and yeah. it was it's meant to with car and bus and, and that kind of thing. Can you can you, can you remember what what it was that you yeah, said? Yeah, so like imagine if you're driving a mini and um, in the shopping centres it parks really well, it goes around the roundabout, turns really well, and you mm. love it, okay? But you want more legroom. So you, you upscale that mini into a bus. Suddenly, it doesn't handle the same. Mm. It's not going to be zippy. It's not going to park really well. But you got it looks like a mini, but doesn't drive like a mini. Okay, so pretty much that little 5.5 five in those small little waves, that 5.5 five probably fits into that, that, that curve of the wave really well. Mm. But as soon as you turn that 5.5 that five five into, say, like a, like a 6 foot 5 for a 100 kg person, Suddenly, that six five doesn't fit that small wave anymore. anymore. Mm. So, um, you should try ride that small board as small as possible, but maybe get more volume to carry your weight and more width to get your um, to carry your 
volume to carry your weight with for your stability, but try to go as small as you can if you are riding small waves so that it, you can go top to bottom and sit as close to the wave's energy as possible. Mm. As soon as you start getting a longer board, you actually got to start taking off at an angle. It's a very good chance you're missing good part of the wave's energy. And you're starting to surf the shoulder, the board's not going to turn as well. There's all these sort of changes that are going to occur. Yeah. So let's just stay here for a second because I'm just reading the yeah. end of the post and he, and he gives a really good example here. So hypothetical, this is hypothetical. Let's say I bought a board that was designed for one to five foot waves for someone who was four foot tall and a hundred pounds. Say that again. So, so let's say that he bought a board yep. that was designed for one to five foot waves. Okay, so let's say head high. Okay, so head high waves for someone who was four foot tall and about a hundred pounds, whatever pounds so, is So that, in, that's kind of like for a kid. Okay. Yeah. What if I was eight foot tall, 200 pounds, and bought the same size dimension board, but scaled up to my size using yep. hypothetical round numbers? Yep. Question number one, should that, board, should that board perform effectively the same for me? Now, you've just answered that with a whole roundabout. Okay, so, so yes, the board would okay. work the same if that person took the wave that that little four foot tall midget was surfing and upsized the wave. Okay, you've answered the question of a, you've, okay. got, you've answered, okay. So then it goes, does that board theoretically work for me at double the size waves too? It only works at double the size wave. Okay. Okay, it, it won't work in the small waves. And so when board shapes don't scale, why not? And I think you kind of answered that with the whole roundabout and the mini bus thing. Well, it's, it's making it fit. Um, it, it's almost like saying, okay, say I've got a square. If you put a square into the square, it's going to fit. But now if you upsize, upsize that, it's never going to fit into that wave. Okay. Okay, so then you've got to think about some other kind of way to, to make that board fit into that wave better. Okay. So, so let's say some famous surfer, Kelly Slater, Rob Machado, whatever, has yep. bought out a brand new model of board. Yep. I'm a big fan of Kelly Slater, Rob Machado, so I want to ride yep. their boards. This board has come out and like the size that Kelly Slater rides is, is this small and this, that and the other, and that's the perfect size that they're saying. Yep. Should, so. Okay, so I, I can probably answer this. I haven't finished my question yet. All right, go, 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 I'm excited. What I'm, so what I'm gonna say here is, should I just forget about that because that board is never going to work for me? Or can I go and get it and just buy a slightly bigger one? Okay, so I've got a question to you then. Yep. All right, I'm answering a question with a question. So say your board's 510 and you want to upscale it to a 64. Yeah. All right, so that's about six inches difference, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. Um, should I keep the rocker the same? So in other words, the same rocker that you have in your 510, should I keep that same rocker in the 6.4? Or should I incrementally scale up on the rocker? Okay, I hope, I hope I'm right and I should be right the amount of time I've spent around you now over, over, over the last couple of weeks while you've been shaping boards on the computer. The rocker should be in, incrementally increased so that it still fits into the pocket, am I right? But then you've got a, sm you've got a, a slower board. Is that surfer a good enough surfer to put on the rail to make their board work. If not, they have to keep the flatter rocker board right. to make it fast, but then it won't fit into the wave. But then, okay, so then if, oh, okay, this is, this is good, this is good. <laughs> so when you started coaching me a couple of years ago, I was riding a puddle jumper. It's really, really flat. Which was really flat, it was like 38 liters, and you just said to me, you're being lazy. You need to ride a different board because all you're doing is you're just letting you're just floating across the yeah surface you're just skimming water. across you need yeah. to actually learn how to surf a curvier board in the pocket yeah yeah so had had you have jumped onto the curvy board initially you would have hated it mm. okay and you love the puddle jumper because it just skims across the water really fast yeah because i was always surfing on the shoulder correct yeah so th this is the conundrum when you do upsize a board do you upsize it and keep the rocker flat for surfers who don't know how to surf well? Or do you 
add rocket to that and change that model and make it slower, hoping that it's a good surfer. Because that's the only way you upsize the board in length. So then what you're saying is that would, so, so now we need to take the, the skill of the surfer into account here yes, as well. Yes, that's what I'm saying. The skill of the surfer means everything. Okay. So you want to get your custom boards. So go support your local shaper. Yeah. I, I, okay. I'm so glad that you've said that because this is this is now my theory on the whole thing. I st don't get me wrong. I love trying to figure out the surfboards, figure out the rails. I mean, we did a whole live on it uh, about a month ago where we spent like two hours. I think it might have been longer than two hours just breaking down the surfboard. Oh, could have gone longer for oh, sure. And, like. And I, I love that stuff. I get so excited about it and I really try to understand it. But at the end of the day, I still don't really know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say that because... Well, in terms of choosing a board, I don't know exactly what it is I'm looking for. Okay, so in one sentence, tell me the difference between your small wave board, your round tail, your swallow tail and your step up. So you've got four boards there. Is it one sentence, small wave board. Well, that's just for, that's just... How's it feel? Sort of everything. It's just nice and flowy and turning. Pro probably the fastest board that you have. Yeah. So, so it's there to generate speed in small ways so yeah. you can just get length of ride and have fun. Yeah. Okay. What's the difference between your, your all-rounder? You've got two. The, what's the difference between the swallowtail and the roundtail? Uh, swallowtails are like fast and like if it's going to be fast barrelly. And roundtail? Roundtail is just doing nice wrap backs and that kind of thing. Okay. And then the step up? Step up is just nice long drawn out turns so that I don't poop my pants when I'm on the rig. Pretty much whenever you're scared, <laughs> yeah. you just want some volume to help you relax, get into it easier, yeah. so you can actually maybe survive the session. So yeah, saying, which which is fair enough. Okay, when I'm saying that, what I'm saying here is most people have a your average knowledge of surfboards, but then we try to be experts and go out there and we go to the shop and we try to choose our own board and. Okay, there are some people out there that have got really good surfboard knowledge, but the majority of people are pretty much, I'm going to say they're pretty much guessing a lot of the time. And there, there was one post where there, where there was uh, within the Surfacts group where one guy said that he buys 12, uh, 10, boards ten, every ten, year. 10, 10 plus boards every yeah. single year. And look, don't get me wrong, I love riding different boards and new boards. The reason why I now just say to you, just, I, I sort of say, well, this is the sort of thing that I'm after. Just tell me what I need to like have, and then you just you no. Just... You, you don't. You actually don't do that anymore. I made you go and shape your own board, and I made you go and glass your own board and sand your own board. Yes, you did, but you decided upon the the thickness and the shape and, and yeah. that kind of thing. But because you made your own board, you understand how glassing works. Mm. You understand um, like rails tucked under, yeah. thick rails, thin rails, V's, concaves. You know all of that. Yeah. Okay, so. Most people should go to a factory and try and watch their board being shaped, watch it being glassed. If, if, you, if you can, it's an investment. Yeah. And the more you invest in time knowing a product and knowing how it's made, um, the better you're going to make choices going forwards as to what equipment you want. I mean, it's almost like between six and $800 a new board. So surely you, you kind of want to know what's going on there. Yeah, absolutely. And this is kind of where we're now touching into the paying your dues side of things yeah and i i've spent so much money over, over over the years in trying to in trying to to buy the right board yeah and a, a couple of probably about a year before i started coaching with you i suddenly had this this desire to suddenly start surfing i had a bit more time on my hands so i started surfing again loads and i went through so many boards really 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 quickly but i spent a lot of money on those on those boards so in terms of paying my dues, it was, I was going through all these different boards, spending all this money where I could have gone straight to a shaper and had a, sat down, had a conversation with them. They could have seen how I surf and then they could have made me a board that would have been much better suited for me rather yeah. than me. So don't, don't get me wrong, okay? In, in every um, discipline, whether you're seeing a doctor mm. or a dentist, whatever, you get good guys and you get bad guys. Yeah. So... You get good shapers and you get bad shapers. Some guys are just hacking away at it, just trying to make yeah. a living, trying to figure stuff out. Whereas some people actually are switched on and they know what they're talking about. 
So um, if you do have the luxury of meeting someone who knows what he's talking about, try stick with the guy. Hmm. Because the first time you might get it wrong, the second time you'll probably get it right. And then once you've got one good board, it's easy from that one board to, make, to branch off and do every other board. Right, I know someone who knows what they're talking about. I think, I think I'm sat right next to him. So yeah. you don't need to look any further. Just, just stay right here. And also for, for coaching, here we go. It's a chance for me to plug the program. Uh, so what, what's interesting, now that you're on good boards, whenever you swap and write someone else's board, how do you feel? Uh, I can tell pretty quick now if it's, if it's like a real crappy, sluggish, horrible, horrible board. Yeah. I, I, I love my boards now. We're, we're probably, I like stroke them. Probably previously you wouldn't know. You'd just jump on and go, oh, yeah. maybe I need to surf it longer. Or you wouldn't know. But once you apply good technique to a good board, you know almost straight away whether it's a keeper or whether it's a dog and you need to get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And quick question that's coming here. EPS yeah. versus PU. What's your thoughts on that? So for about 20 plus years, I only made PU boards and I did not like EPS. Um, I tried EPS on several occasions and I hated them. Um, I always say that they surfed almost like if you're riding a, a, a two litre half empty Coke bottle. Mm -hmm. it, it just felt corky and weird and wobbly and I didn't like it. Yeah. But now all I ride is EPS and I don't like PU anymore. So right. I've, I've completely changed over the last uh, four year period. But one of the big reasons for that though is spine tech, yeah. isn't it? So um, in the, the board behind, there's the, that black rail that goes up there. That is the, the spine tech, which is unbreakable. No, no, it's breakable. I have nothing's I, I have not seen, you've asked a lot of, I've seen you ask a lot of people to test how, if they can break it. I have not seen one person it's, test it yet. It's got really positive flex and you absolutely can't beat it. I absolutely love that stuff to bits. It takes twice as long to make um, and it's a pain in the ass, but it's well worth the money and the weight. <laughs> okay, we've got, uh, uh, okay, we've got one coming up here, which, which could almost be a cue to pull on the video. Uh, so okay. Carl, let me bring it up on the screen. So, uh, so, so very quickly, I don't know if I actually heard, so at, at, at the end of it. I'm an EPS fan. I'm yep. I've been converted and that's all I ride. I ride it in big waves, I ride it in small waves. It's my all-rounder. Um, I'm EPS through and through. There we go, perfect. There have, been, there have been boards placed on the second hand rack, discarded due to poor performance. Maybe the wrong fins had been used. So in terms of poor performance... Would, would, would fins have that influence on the board? Should we bring the video up? This could be the perfect time. Okay, we'll, we'll get to that. Oh, so. even I'm getting excited for the video. Okay. So, um, if someone ordered a board that was too narrow for them, and they, they were a really, really wobbly surfer, mm. they would go, hey, the board's too unstable, I'm gonna sell it. Yep. But someone who surfed a bit more smoother would jump onto that board and would probably go amazing. So the board that's in that rack, it's, it's, you don't know the reason why, so you, you almost mm. need to have a bit of board knowledge, look at it, know what you're looking for in a surfboard, and if it has that quality, take it out, go for a test ride. If you like it, try before you buy. Yeah. Well, so you, you lent me one of your boards. It was your step ups. It was a 6.3, yeah. wasn't it? But it was like super narrow. Yeah. It was like 17. It was like a banana, actually. Yeah. And it, it was like, how, how wide? It was like 17. 17 and three quarters. 17 and three quarters wide. I went out and surfed it. I just found it really unstable as I was getting up. But we ended up sort of going, for, I think it was, what, 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 I don't even know what my boards are now because you don't even write the dimensions on Yeah, ice. You went 19. So I went up to about 19 instead and I was riding sort of 20. 20 to sort of 21 before and um, yeah so but 19 feels perfect for me at the level that i'm at i'm at now so yeah what did gary say that's gary says been riding some bigger winter waves winter waves with chop on feel like you have to nurse your bottom turn go longer yeah um okay so if you're taking off from a wave and you're feeling a lot of chop start your bottom turn earlier so as you stand up, try to lean over and touch the water. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why you're feeling chopped is your board's going flat. It's, it's, it's kind of bouncing and slapping the water. Okay. So if you start your bottom turn earlier, you go on rail, and that'll cut through the chop. Yep. So yeah, just start turning a bit earlier. So if you're feeling the chop, 
then uh, you're not on rail. Let's 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 go to a couple of the, uh, there's, there's a couple more questions come in here. Hang, hang on a second. Cut. Cup Media's given a smiley face. Obviously, you're excited about the video too. It's good video. Yeah, uh, we'll play it soon. Okay, we'll come to those. Those. Uh, okay, we'll come to the other questions in a second. But okay, let's so, go to the video. No, hang on. Oh. Let's just, no, no, I'm going to stop you. So Eric Peterson uh, on email sent in that. So it was quite a long question. I've tried to narrow it down. He is riding a seven six a seven six uh, board that is sixty two liters. He was 111 kilograms and the board was made for him by a shaper. Yep. He's lost uh, 10 kilograms, so he's down to 100 kilograms. And he's finding it hard to engage the rail. And so his question was, does losing, does losing that weight mean move to a short board? No. Look, I can lose a lot of weight. It doesn't mean that um, I'm going to be paddle fit. Mm. And it doesn't mean that my pop-up skills got better. Um, however, if he's got fitter, okay, and he's paddling better with a more efficient technique, yep. that's the time that you can start using a slightly more or less volume board. So basically, as your body upskills, you can start dumping some foam. And you're going to find is with less foam, you get a way better feel. So probably the best way for me to explain, and we spoke about this in depth earlier, is that if you've ever been surfing in a really thick wetsuit, like a, a four or five mil really thick rubber wetsuit, if you had to take that off and just go surf in warm water and boardies, that, that feeling of freedom is almost what less volume does when you know how to use it properly. Mm. Okay, so by having less volume, the board feels better, it feels more alive. It's like having a car with power steering. It just, it, it turns easier. Everything becomes effortless. If you've got a lot of volume, it's really hard to move a lot of volume around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Another quick question that came in to me via email. Uh, and this was from Nick. And it was, should we try, uh, try, try to surf the smallest, lowest volume board we can surf while consistently still catching waves and successfully popping up? So what's the lowest volume you can surf? So what he's asking is, should you go for the smallest and the most lowest volume board that you can? No. Okay. No, definitely not. Um, okay. This your, is about... So your volume. Think of... Let, let's change volume for thickness down the center of the board. Okay. Okay, which is strictly your paddling power your volume has to be able to paddle you out to the lineup. If you've got a wetsuit on, you need to upsize your volume. If you don't have a wetsuit on, you can slightly downsize your volume. Okay, the, the width is your stability. So if you're running really weak waves most year round, like in the UK and so on, yep. you're gonna have to get a wider board. But if you're surfing Hawaii, where you're consistently getting some really powerful swells, you can get a narrow board, which will allow you to control the speed that you're getting. Yeah. So that's also really important. Now, if you're going really fast on a wave, you're going to be able to lean and turn your board. So if your rail's too thick, you won't be able to turn it. You want a slightly thinner rail when you're turning at high volume. But if you're going slowly, you want a, a, a big voluptuous rail because you're going to be turning very slowly and you want the rail to be able to pop you out without catching rail at the end of the turn. Okay, I don't think anyone has ever described a, a rail as voluptuous. Well, I wanted to say fat, <laughs> maybe uh, a boxy rail instead okay. of voluptuous, yeah. Excellent. One more question that came in via email and that was around, question around board size. So this, so this is Oliver and he said that from, when progressing from novice, so this is, surfing a down the line green wave to intermediate. What he's asking is basic bottom turns, cutbacks and top turns. Yeah. He's been told that you need to be able to perform all of these three basic moves on a bigger board before you drop down in size. Now he is riding an eight foot catch surf foamy. So one of those things that Jenny oh. O'Brien rides. Now, at the present moment in time, although I, I'm not allowed to surf, 
I have, I am allowed to get back in the water and I am allowed to paddle. I have gone and bought myself an eight foot um, catch, surf. Cat, catch surf foamy. It is bright pink just so that I can keep my paddle strength up. So I'm paddling up and down. Now, I'm not supposed to surf, but I'm not going to tell a lie. There's been a couple of little ripples that have come through just down the road there. They're not like real powerful waves. They're just nice mellow waves. Couldn't resist. And yeah. they happen to accidentally catch me and start to propel me forwards. And I thought the only thing I can really do here is stand up so I can quickly get down the line and get out the back. Anyway, that's the excuse I'm going to use. Um, but yeah, shh, I'm not meant to be surfing. But one thing I can say is that in, I can bottom turn it, I can top turn it, and I can maneuver, I'm not gonna say I can do a cutback on it, but I can maneuver it around. Yeah. But man, it's difficult. It's so it's difficult. Easy, right. so, so that whole thing there of being able to do those things on a, on a big board. Yeah. Um, okay, I so, think it's wrong. So this is a really good yeah. subject. Okay, those eight foot wide thick foamies are there to assist people who are not regular water users. So they don't have paddle power, they're unfit, they probably just lie there like slugs on the board and waves catch them. Mm. But as soon as you start paddling for a while and you start getting fitter, leaner, and you start understanding where the waves break and where you should sit, you need to get a proper surfboard. Yeah. Something that's designed to turn. So those um, those big boards have got really fat rails. What's on like that? Yeah. So when you turn if you're leaning you, you almost got to bury that rail into the water if the rail can't go in it'll just pop flat mm. and you won't be able to turn now those waves the, the boards are also really wide for stability now if you try to turn it um, again the board just wants to keep going flat yeah. you can't actually submerse the rail to get the thing to turn which makes the board really hard to turn mm. they're also long and they're flat so it's also kind of hard to kind of step on the tail and turn it so those boards aren't really designed for turning so if that guy's asking me, should I look at turning the board before I can downsize? I'm going to go, no. If your balance is good and you can go along a wave, it's now time to start downsizing to a board where you can start learning mm. how to turn, i.e. learning how to control a surfboard mm. and being able to surf it in the pocket. Okay. So the takeaway there is if, you, if you're watching this and you are somebody who has just got into surfing maybe or only been surfing a year year or so and you're riding the a soft top that typical sort of learn to surf kind of board once you are able to to catch a wave and balance you're saying okay now it's time to sort of think about starting to bring the board size down yep okay cool Good. and okay. Is, is 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 there a recommended sort of next board down from so if someone's been riding a big eight foot soft top is there a sort of like a, a good sort of yeah, halfway point? Get, get a mini mail. Um, so if you were on an eight foot, you can go anywhere from a 7.0 to like a 7.6 mini mail. Mm. Um, it needs to be slightly narrower, um, slightly thinner. Yep. Um, but you're going to find that because it's a, a hard board, it's going to be plane a lot faster. So it's, yep. it's going to have more speed. The rails are more refined, which means they'll roll and turn as opposed to just a piece of foam. Yeah plastic that just kind of sits there so um you, you'll definitely find that the speed's a big difference the, the turning's different the control's mm. different um and yeah it'll, it'll be a, a much smoother faster better yeah. ride and one other thing with regarding soft tops because soft tops are there's a lot of people riding them even Crazy. like so even people that are that are that are, that are really good at surfing and now going out and they're, they're getting soft tops and, and riding them because don't get me wrong that's that's they're super 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 oh, fun but what you're saying as well, and so I've also got a 510 sort of um, soft top thing that, that I was riding for a while, and you were saying to me, just be really careful that you don't ride it too much because it will cause you to have bad habits. It starts making you lazy. Mm. Yeah. So. Okay, so th think of this. And um, back in the day, like in the 60s and 70s, you had like the, the Mustangs, like the Ford Mustangs and all the muscle cars. Yep. And those didn't have power steering, so you really had to kind of like muscle the car yeah. right around corners. Fast forward to 2021, where we have like electric cars, we all got power steering, it's really easy to drive. So taking someone from the 70s and fast forwarding them to 2021, mm. they would probably drive the car with an oversteer because they're used to trying to have to overpower these, these big boards. So, I said big boards, heavy cars. So if you are learning 
technique and you, you are over surfing, when you do get into a high performance board, you will potentially over surf it. Yeah. The board will catch rail, it will slide out, um, and you could potentially take a really good board and over surf it and say the board goes shit. Then you'll go to the shaper and go, hey, this board goes shit. Then the shaper will scratch his head going, damn, where did I go wrong? Then he'll have to take a perfectly fine board and make the rail thicker and try, so I can hardly turn. Yeah. Make it wider so it doesn't catch rail, thicken the tail up so it doesn't slide out and give you bigger fins so it doesn't slide out. <laughs> now you've taken a perfectly yeah. normal board and made it really shit just so that you don't oversurf it. Yeah, okay, cool. A few questions come through here. Yeah. So if you can answer these real quick. Weight versus volume versus, versus skills, any thoughts? Have you, can, you, can you answer that quickly? There's nothing Weight that's really versus volume versus skill. Okay, so the higher your skill level, the less volume you need. Um, weight versus volume, it is, there's no, Oh, there's no formula for it. Right. It's, it's personal preference. Like you have to ride a few boards trying different volumes until such time yeah. you find that volume that you're happy with. Yeah. Yeah. So just with volume there actually, last year, so last Christmas I went back to the UK and I surfed the wave pool and at the wave pool um, in Bristol you, you've got, you can, you can use all, all of their boards. Yeah. So I was just like, okay, well, I'm going to try a whole bunch of different boards while I'm here. And nor so... Prior to going over there, I was riding around about the sort of 33, 34 litre mark. Yep. When I went into that wave pool, I, I was using a board that was 26 litres. And it was- wow, that's what I ride. Yeah, and it was absolutely tiny. But the big difference there was they told me exactly about to sit. And because it was the wave pool, you didn't, it was just like one stroke and you were up because you were exactly in, in the- In, in the bus In the sweet spot yeah. every time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that means you, you, your volume is to basically get out and catch waves. Mm. Okay, but if you can catch waves easy, you don't need a lot of volume then. Yeah. Cool. So um, if you're a competent good surfer, you can probably get away with less volume because you yeah. know how to catch waves. So the so the weight becomes almost irrelevant because it's more down to how good you are. No, it, it is relevant because if you push really hard in the bottom turn, all right, and, or if you lean really hard in the bottom turn, okay. you're sinking more rail. Yep. So you want a thicker rail that pops you back out. So like Gabriel Medina, Geordie Smith, Owen Wright, those guys ride really big, chunky, high volume rails and right. high volume boards. It gives them more pop, it gives them more lift and allows them to do bigger carbs and bigger turns. Okay. A guy like Philippe Toledo, he's got a very fast muscle twitch. Um, he rides lower rail volume boards because he's, he's pushing and disengaging and engaging, disengaging. So he's moving a hell of a lot more quicker. Yeah. So um, it's not so much weight as it is fast twitch muscle memory versus, okay. but was it fast versus long, slow? I don't know, but you know what I mean. <laughs> We're all getting confused. Yeah, okay. if you move quick, you might want a, a, a lower volume board. If you move slower, you might want a higher volume. Right. Uh, great one here. What do we got here? So I'm in Germany. There are no shapers I would trust. What, uh, what would Clayton need for me to make me a custom? Do you even, okay, that's, that's a question about a board. Uh, you, we, we, a yeah, we've got a distributor in Germany. Um, they make boards for the River Wave and they do custom orders too. So if you ever wanted to, we could definitely do something. But if you can give me a video, self of, a video of yourself surfing, I need to know your current board dimensions. Okay, so, so, so this is good. So this would apply for any shaper. Yeah. So if you are going to a shaper to get a board made for you one take a video of you surfing yeah i want to see how you surf yeah two what were you writing in the video okay so what are your dimensions that you're writing so, and, and ideally if you like if if, if your shape is local go in with that board and yeah. give it to them yeah okay yeah. so video the dimensions or the board what else yeah what do you love about the board and what do you hate about the board so what do you love about the board what do you hate about the board what else do you want to know where are you surfing it is, is it for your local beachy? Are you going a trip to to the Mentawais? Um, is it for reef break, beach break? Like, where are you surfing at? I need to know that information. Okay, so 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 type of waves and more about your surfing. Anything else that you need to know, or is that it? Um, what fin systems you want? What kind of glassing do you want on the board? Is it strong, medium, or light? Is it in EPS or PU? So EPS, PU, and then the glassing type. And I heard you. Um, 
you were talking to, uh, it was Amanda, Amanda, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, Amanda was asking. And I was kind of like, hmm. So, and the way that you sort of said it was, do you, do you want it to, it was high performance. There was like three different well, options. Strong, medium, or light. Strong, medium, or light, yeah. So do you want it to last you roughly six months, a year, or two years? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So those, uh, so that, that's some real golden nuggets there of what you need to, to take with you when you go to see a shaper to make sure that you help that shaper design you the best board. That's, I think that's been the, 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 the biggest golden takeaway so far. There's lots of them, but that's, that's been a really cool one because I think a lot of people just, as you say, they just rock up and just go, can you make me a board? Let's play a video. Okay, let's play a video. Let's play a video and then we'll get back into, into some more questions. Yeah, so so the video, let me, let, me, let me get the iPad yeah. back up. Which one do you want? Uh, do you want to go for the fin thing? Or, yes. Or, do, 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 hang on, hang on, don't get too excited. I'm getting excited for you. So we're just going to go back now to the, the fin question. And this also relates to a question that came up in Surpax as well, didn't it? So you wanted to use this video to explain something that came up in Surpax. And wasn't it to do with, with, with somebody on the back foot riding the bike? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had a guy on Surfax going, um, he thinks he's a heavy front foot surfer. Are there any exercises he can do to start turning hit more on the back foot or surfing more off the back mm. foot? And I was like, whoa, like alarm bells. Um, think about what you're saying about wanting to be more heavy on the back foot and apply it to riding a bicycle. Like you never want to kind of get heavy on the back foot. It just doesn't make any sense. So mm. I said to him, go have a look at some Derek Hines surfing finless and then rethink about your question. So when we surf, you want, it's like riding a bicycle. You want to lean if you're going fast and you want to twist if you're going slowly. Okay, so there are no fins that come into the equation. So have a look at this and load me up. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Ready for this? It blew my mind. This is incredible. So it's Derek Hind. So some background. Derek Hind here is 56 years old. He's blind in one eye. What? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that bit. And I think he... Oh, that makes it even better now. He shapes these boards himself. And he's in J-Bay. It's like double overhead and he's finless. Okay. The first thing you notice about the picture, his back is straight. So he's got good balance. Yep. Okay. The second thing, he's doing a lunge. He's lunging. Both knees yep. are pointing forward. And the third thing, he's got his coffee cup up. Yep. Okay. So cue the video. Co it, oh, look at this. Look at this. Wait, 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 wait. It's insane. I, I'm just going to say, uh, if, 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 you, if you're thinking that, that you've got slow internet, this is, this, is, this is an older bit of footage. So it has yeah, downloaded it's pixelated. In, in, in low quality. But you don't need it in good quality to see just how amazing it is. Look Here at the go. lean on the bottom turn. Like he's shadow, clearly man. on the rail and he's leaning the board over. Right. Mm. He's not going, whoa, and twisting onto his back foot. Yeah. Okay, so he's using his rails to turn. Then to go up the wave, he extends. Look at this. He stands up and extends. The same way uh, when you go on a swing, you compress and extend. Yep. On a trampoline, you compress and extend. You're dancing, you compress and extend. There's so many examples in life how when we compress, we go down, we extend, we go mm. up. We even talking about it. Okay, if you inflate a balloon, it goes up. You deflate it, it goes down. Yeah. So if you breathe in, you go up the wave. You you go down the wave. Yeah. Okay. If if you're wondering, Clayton just said we were talking. Um, I've I've been working on some of the the visualizations, and we were doing one for flow, and it was all about the compression and extension. We were using a balloon as a visualization process. Um, if you're if you're in the insiders, then you will get to hear. The, the next one, because I know that you got to hear one already this week about the about the pop-up. Uh, we've got the next visualization coming very soon. In, like, in the next couple of days, I'll also upload one for getting that flow along the wave. And this one is even better than the last one we put up. We're all we're getting mega excited here. He's on a scooter now. Hang on. Right, you go, you go again. Okay, so all I'm showing you here, if I clear that, look at where his hands are pointing. Forward, like he's riding a bicycle. Yep, I don't know where else which, to look. With which there, means there. that he's front on. Okay, so look at the control he's got out of his body. Now his body hardly moves. It's beautiful. Look at this. Compress, lean, twist. Compress, lean. Oh, this is really good. Twist. <laughs> look at his hands. They're, they're so quiet. 
It's it's epic, epic, epic footage. Look at that little rail grab. Oh man, look at that. Okay, so lean off the bottom, twist off the top. It's the most so good. epic bit of information. I mean information, epic bit of surfing. And then just compress and extend to go down. So if mm. you look at my hands in the video, you can probably go oh, back to the on, video. On, right, right, so on the bottom turns, he was kind of leaning it in on the top turns. The hand goes up. So at any point there, was he turning off the back foot? No, well, he's not. He stood on the back of the board. Yeah, he's not even standing there. So I don't, I don't think he ever stood on the back of the board. All right, so... That control, he got out of his body. So what I'm trying to get at in the surf acts is by using your body better, you don't need fins. You can actually surf it without fins. Mm. But when you add fins, you just get a whole other level of control. Yeah. But don't rely on the fins. Rely on the one thing that you can control, which is your body. Yeah. And if you just do the basics, when you're going fast, lean, when you're going slow, twist. Yeah. Like all of the stuff makes sense and gets easier. So all of the, so uh, okay, and so all of this leaning and twisting. You've mentioned coffee cup and, and all that sort of thing. There, that is all of those things. All no, of the, no, all of all of those. Hang on, all if, of those things. If we are go back, if we within go, within the the, the program, hundred percent. Yeah. So, so all of these things that you hear us mention, whether whether it's coffee cup, Oreo biscuit. I don't think we're talking about Oreo biscuit tonight, but uh, but all all of these things. They are all part of the accelerated surf program, which you can get at the link, which is well, on the screen. Just this thing makes us talk about the the title of our talk tonight which is paying your dues paying your dues yeah. yes so ching, ching. you've got a bit of background story you've been surfing for over 20 years yeah do so you want to give some feedback to, about your story to everyone um well I'll, yeah so i'll do it really quick so i've been surfing for over 20 years i started when i was 17 and now 43 so that's that's 20 geez 26 years and so 26 years in that 26 years I thought I was doing okay. Never, so I never had any coaching or anything like that. I just thought I'd figure it all out myself. I thought that no, 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 I'll just keep going surfing and, I, and I'll work it all out myself. And going out with with a, with a few of my mates, I'll figure it out. And I, I'll watch enough YouTube clips and and surf movies that I'll, that, that I'll that I'll figure it out myself. Two years ago, when I started being coached by Clayton. Everything that I had learned up until that point, I then went on a process of unlearning. So 24 years of surfing then so, had to be unlearned. So was so, it wrong or was it misinterpretation or did you just not understand it right? What, where did it all go wrong in 20 years? What happened? I didn't have the correct input. I wasn't getting the feedback. So I never videoed myself and watched myself back and all that kind of thing. I just thought that I was ripping. So... so are you saying that the difference between thought and knowledge was like, there's a lot of stuff that you didn't quite know or didn't understand. Mm. Oh yeah, so, so, so there was a big, so there was a big void of knowledge that I didn't know. But then there was stuff that I thought that I did know, but what I thought I knew, I actually knew the wrong thing. It's like the opposite. Yeah. And so uh, even now, I'm still trying to break that habit of, of when I come up to the top of a wave, of, of folding myself in half. And that's something that I'm still trying to get out and, and extend up instead. Okay. So, th so, these so, are, so these are bad habits that, was, that have been ingrained in for so long that now, so now I'm, now I'm in this, this, this transition period where I'm now starting to improve. And over the last two years, my surfing has, has just gone through the, I'm going to say gone through the roof in terms of how good I was before. Uh, by no stretch of the imagination am I going to say that I'm this amazing surfer. I'm, I consider myself to be your, your everyday kind of surfer. If we go out there, I still, I still get scared when it gets big. I'm, st I'm still chasing that elusive barrel. I've, I've had a couple of sniffs, but I don't know if they were proper barrels or not. You know the kind of ones I, Le I mean. Leash barrels. It, I, kind of, I, I, I kind of felt like it was a bit of a sort of side piling coming over, but I'm still, I'm still chasing those, those things. But my skill level and my ability to surface has changed so much in the last two years. And that, is, and that has come from investing in giving, passing your knowledge on to me so that I can improve my surfing. And had I not done that, I would still be... So something that I've noticed that in the last two years, people have been complimenting you about your surfing. Yeah. They, 
not in the last two years. I'd say before I broke my neck, that's sort of six months leading up to that. People would go, oh, like, like, oh you're looking good. Like you, 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 you got some flow happening there. Um, so that's exciting. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really exciting. And I, I, I'm, I'm so gutted that I haven't been able to get back in the water because I have got what well, I found the footage that I gave to Clayton before, so before Clayton even started coaching me. And what I wanted to do was to find some waves that were about similar sort of size and do a side by side so that you could see the difference in my surfing from all of Clayton's coaching. We're going to have to wait a few months for me to do that, but I will post up some footage of me surfing now versus what it was back at the beginning. We've got a lot of comments that are coming here. Oh, well, look at that. Okay. Okay. Let's, we're, getting, we're going to work backwards here. So, so that's my story. But, but seeking the coaching was was the best thing that I ever did for my surfing. Was to have that have that that, that knowledge gap filled and to have someone call me out on the the stuff that I was doing so wrong. And it's only in the last few years that I've, that I've done this, and not just in surfing, in multiple aspects. So I'm, I'm self-employed. Uh, and that, that was something that I want to say, yeah. is that like a lot of the s technique, but also the, the hacks or the, the skills that we're learning, they don't, even, they don't always just apply to surfing, they apply to life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like I'm asking you to surf with, with a good posture. Mm. Um, we're also trying to clear the mind, we're trying to be present. Yeah. Um, if you think too far ahead or, or keep living in the past, you're not present. Mm. So I suppose if you are present in the moment, you're enjoying your surfing so much more. Mm. And I think that's what where you're at at the moment is is you are present, you are grounded, you are feeling, and the stuff that you're feeling is so much more intense and yeah. so much better. Yeah, and yeah, as you say, it, it goes over to, uh, over to everything. And I mean, look, one and one thing that that frustrates me is is when I see people and they're desperately trying to to find the answer themselves. And I'm like, but the answer is right there. If you just go and ask that person, they'll be they're, they're, they're going to be able to help you. And they go, oh no 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 no, I can I can sort it out my I can I can sort it out for myself. And uh, th th there was a post that was put up in the group. It has been removed. Uh, not not by me. The the, the person re removed it themselves, and they were they were asking for for, for some advice on their surfing, but they were they were asking on somebody else's behalf and asking for a friend. Yeah. So yeah. The, uh, and they were asking for a friend, and I I, I was going to show the video to Clayton. We were going to like pass some some really good knowledge on, but the video's gone, and I I don't know. I think that sometimes our our ego can get in the way so much yeah. that we think that that we know better. And what I've learned, and as I say, this doesn't just apply to surfing, this applies to everything. What I've learned is that you, you, it's good to, to know something about all these things, but there, when it comes to certain things, there is gonna be somebody that knows way more than you, and it is so much more efficient and effective to, to ask that person. With, with my, I've been, I've always had my own business ever since I was 21, and I've always, tried to look for people to help me in areas where perhaps I know my my skills need to be um, brought up really quickly. So I, I'm not naturally a business person. So I pulled in people to help me with business, to help me fast track those skills. And it's the same in surfing. Like if you're, if you're going on YouTube trying to find your fitness exercises to help you get fitter at surfing, the chances are you might be doing those things wrong, which you could be doing, doing more damage when you've got, you've got Chris Mills within this community who you can look to straight away and he, he would be able to guide you exactly as you, need to, uh, exactly as you need to be guided for your surf fitness. So it's all of these little things, all of these little areas of your life where just getting somebody else to help you out is yeah anyway i'm, I'm going on a, on a bit of a rant here i like this i don't know who it is it just says facebook user but it says okay hang on let me just pull this down hi all learning how to move your hips is the key to moving your body and i do agree there 100 percent. if your hips are locked the top half will move but the bottom half mm. won't move now your bottom half is the connection to the board yeah so you, you kind of got to point your knees, move the hip, and yeah. then move the shoulders. So yeah. you got to get the top and bottom half talking to each other. Uh, and a, a classic example of this is the 30-day challenge that we did. We had Raz, who was a, who was a huge guy, who was a giant. I'm tall. Raz was towering above me, but he, 
there was like this disconnection between his top and his bottom half. Yeah, and it, we we spent so much time just working on just that one thing of getting his body to talk. Yeah, there, there might not have been like a lot of visual surfing change in Raz in the thirty day challenge, but the the mental aspect and trying to get him to connect with his body was was massive, and I really enjoyed coaching him. Okay. Uh, so we've got. I recently had neck surgery. How long have you been out of the water? Now, luckily, I didn't have. I didn't have to have surgery. I just broke my neck uh, and my back. Uh, I was. So I was out for six weeks. I'm now paddling, and occasionally catching a little one that comes through. But I was told to not surf for six months. I, I am told I'm not allowed to surf for six months. <laughs> Can we careful what I say here? Uh, <laughs> Uh, what have we got here? Same here, started on my own, surfed for... Okay, here we go. Same here, started on my own, surfed on my own for a decade, clueless, but for... Sick VHS. Of Sick Joy! Oh, that, that was, was my favourite surf movie! So good. That, that, was, that was my official favourite surf movie. I reckon movie. Billabong came up with the best movies. Um, there was Green Iguana, there was Sick mm. Joy, there was Filthy Habits, um, there was Billabong Pump. Man, they had some good movies in those times. I did. Uh, Looks like the the uh, abominable surf man. I don't know who that is. Is this for UK waves? By the way, oh, I must probably be talking about about that. Okay, cool. Not quite sure what the is this for UK waves. Everything that we're talking about applies to all waves. Hip flexors uh, are loose on hinder. Okay, what about that? Oh my word! Look at me. We have got some right. Excuse my yeah. excuse my posture okay. here. You. Wow, we've, geez, there's so many questions that have come through here. All right. Okay, um, let's cue this quickly. And then while you check some of the questions, you choose what you want, I'm going to get into this quick. Yeah, so you do that. I, so I'm going to look at this screen here, guys. I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> don't pay me out. I'm looking at comments. But Clayton will, uh, I'll, I'll go small in the corner anyway, so I'm almost invisible. Okay, so Rob Matado is one of my like all-time favorite surfers. I was watching him again today, and if I could surf like one person, it would probably be Rob. So look at the casual posture that he's standing in. It is absolutely beautiful. Knees pointing where he's going. He's not stepping on the tail. He's kind of standing forward on the rail. And in this clip, he's riding a mid-length. So it's probably um, close to like the seven-foot range. Um, as he drops in, he's gently leaning in. So if, if that was 90, uh, let me get my little toolbar up. If that was 90 degrees, as he starts leaning in on the bottom turn, he starts to kind of, oh, it's, it's ever so slightly just on the rail. And you can see when he starts engaging the rail, the board actually starts accelerating. Because when you're on rail, there's less friction on the bottom, so the board goes faster. So that was beautiful. Then... Look at the back arm, look at the coffee cup. If I zoom into that, he's just got it nice and relaxed and it's just chilled. He's not like patting the cat and throwing water behind him. Then as he goes down the wave, very gentle lean. So from standing in balance again, the very gentle lean, which is the bottom turn. So he's probably going from 90, he's going over to about like 80 degrees, just a very gentle 10% lean making the board go faster. Okay, now this is interesting. He stacks on the front foot, over here, all the weights forward, and if I zoom in, his back foot, it's off the surfboard, so he's standing all the weight forward, and then he shifts his weight back, gearing up for a turn. Okay, so he takes a step back. Whoops, wave gets a little bit wobbly. Now, what's really impressive here is that the board is side on. It's sideways. So he's not standing on the board. He's standing sideways on the board. So if you have a look, his back is straight, okay? But his legs are almost at 90 degrees onto a side on board. A lot of people make the mistake of standing on top of the board and trying to push down on the back foot. Um, Rob is sideways pushing on the back foot. So there's a very big difference. He's not pushing the board into the water. He's pushing the board away from him. So the board wraps around that turn. And he holds the turn. So 
It's a long, full man turn. It's one, two, three. I do feel that when most people are learning how to turn, they turn one and just expect the board to teleport and end up sort of on the opposite end of the wave. So the big thing is that when you're learning how to turn, allow the board to finish its turning circle, try to flow through the turns, and also distinguish between a fast turn, which will be a lean, and a slow turn, which will be a twist. Mm. Okay. All right, that's my little... Cool. There's a, look, there, are, there are a lot more questions that are, that are inside this here. We're not gonna have a chance to answer them all this evening. We will go through and see if we can answer some of them um, by, um, with, with, with comments. But guys, there's, there's so much good, um, good advice coming through from all you guys in the community as well. So please check out some of the comments. If you've got something that you can add, then please add it in there. We will go through a couple more because there's a couple of that I've seen which, um, which we'll quickly pull up. Uh, but one thing that I'd like to just say is that a few of you have been sharing some of your big takeaways when you've been out surfing within the within the community. It's been so good. Yeah. Really, really appreciate that. Just those little things that you've either heard Clayton say or things that you've tried yourself out in the water that have made a big difference for you. And you sharing those things is so, so, so valuable. So for those of you that have shared, that's amazing. Thank you so much for, for sharing your experiences. And I, I suppose in, in a way as well, being a little bit vulnerable with, with everybody because... I think everyone likes to think that they're this, this great, amazing surfer, and by by posting up your your, your video or, or, or your little takeaway, you might be sort of saying that that you're not as good as, as as somebody else. But these things are gold, and they and they help this everybody in this community. This is this community is for everybody, whether you're somebody who's just starting out, or whether you're somebody that's been surfing for years and years and years. This is a community for for every every surfer at every level uh, on every on every kind of wave. One thing I would like to know is if we were to, re so we've done two reviews on surf movies so far. So we did the, the, the Free Scrubber and For Whom the Atolls, two new movies. Is there, a, we've just mentioned Sick Joy before and Jeremy, our, our, our magical man behind the scenes has sent me a text saying, why don't you ask them, what surf movie would you like us to review so we'll pick we'll, we'll sit down we'll watch it we'll pick some of the best bits and then we'll we'll, we'll give you some feedback uh, and, and a bit of review and coaching breakdown on that movie so comment below which movie you would so like probably us... the favorite surfer and the, the favorite movie okay so, so it could be like surfer, favorite movie. um richie collins in the old billabong pump okay or cool oki in green iguana or something yeah. like that yeah so just Mention your, your, your favorite surfer and your movie, and then we'll just choose one at random, or we'll choose a couple of them at random, and then we will do a Coach's Eye review on that movie. That being said, Coach's Eye, remember, it is only on YouTube, so head over to youtube.com forward slash ombesurf, so that's O-M-B-E, surf, and subscribe to, the, subscribe to the channel there. Also, if any of you do want to get into the Accelerated Surf program, the link is on the screen there. This is... Clayton's entire coaching program, it's available for you online. It is a science to simulate the surf. We can break that down in another, in another live if you want us to sort of go through those, those three elements and why they are so important. But all, all the program details are there, so get your teeth into that. If you're in the insiders group, keep your eye out on the group over the next couple of days because we're gonna try and work out a date for doing the Zoom where we're actually gonna get face-to-face ah, yeah, -face yeah, yeah. and actually have a conversation with you guys. So insiders, keep an eye out for that. Uh, also, insiders, keep an eye out for the meditation that is that is coming up. I've done enough plugging for a second. Let's have a look at this. This this I think this is this is quite a quite, quite a cool question here from Ian Major. It's much easier to identify your board's needs if you have consistent waves. So we do have the luxury here on the Gold Coast. Is most days we can go out there and surf, even if it's sloppy, we can still surf. It. Yeah. Not the case in the UK. So if somebody is, is in a place where they can't get to too many waves. How can they, how can they try out all these different things or try out different boards, so that they can come up with new ideas on on what on what they need to go to their shaper with? It's much easier to identify your board's needs if you have consistent waves. So when the waves do come, are they big? Are they small? Are they short and dumpy? Are they long and fat? I mean, I'm I'm sure the waves. No, but, no so, so, I I, th I think this question is saying. Like if if you're gonna go, you you're gonna try out your mate's board this that and the other yeah. that's all very well if we're in a position where there's where there's waves all the time but if you if you if you're living in a place where the waves are really inconsistent you can only get out I mean I remember when I lived back in the UK sometimes you could go like three weeks 
because you'd be working and the surf will be in the middle of the week. If you can only surf once or twice a month, you want to go out there and you want to... And you, okay, you, so answer me a question. You live in Australia. Yeah. You went to the UK for work, but you went and surfed the wave pool in the UK. Yeah. So I would say the wave pool is one really good way of testing out different boards. 100%. Okay. So there, so there you go. And, and wave pools are appearing everywhere. They're, now. they're going to be a thing of the future. Basically, in the next two years, there are going to be wave pools all around the world. Yeah. So you can get your waves, you can test tons of boards, yeah. um, and it's the same consistent wave again and again. And that's one of the good things with the wave pools, actually, is you can try their boards. So you yeah. so you get to test out. And, and I did that when I went to the Bristol wave pool. I know that in the UK at the moment, you, you're, in, you're, you're still in pretty hard lockdown. I'll tell you what, though, the wave the wave pool over in the UK, they put, they put up these cool tents and everything, like full yeah. camping experience there now. It looks amazing. Sweet. Oh, I want to uh, I want to come back over and just, just go camping around the, around the, around the swimming pool. Uh, and then this one here. Is it critical to buy from a shaper who is a surfer? Well, a shaper who doesn't surf is not that critical. Oh. I, I think this is a good one. Okay. So if you're going to go have an uh, operation done. Should you go see a doctor or a guy who's not a doctor but he likes cutting people up? Depends on which country you're in. <laughs> I think you've answered the question. Uh, I would get a board from a guy who surfs. Um, the person who's not surfing is not in tune with what's going on. And if you don't use it, you lose it. So that feeling of the bottom turn, the feeling of paddling, um, if, if new shapes are coming out, are those guys in tune with the new shapes and new ideas? Um, yeah. If it's just a conventional standard board that the old guy who used to surf is just whacking out sort of production shapes, it, it's, it's probably fine. Mm -hmm. that, that's, it's kind of like, oh, I don't even know how to put this into an explanation. Um, if they're just repeating what they know, and if you're ordering with inside that, um, well, you're going to help me out your end. Parameters? Parameters. It's fine. But as soon as you, you go outside of that parameters, like an asymmetrical, a fish, or, or something yeah. weird, they're not going to know what you're talking about. Okay. So if you are going to get a board from someone who's not surfing anymore, make sure that you're ordering what they were good at when they were surfing. Okay. I think that answers it. And then we're going to do this one last question and then we are going to going to disappear. So remember to put your favorite surf movie and surfer down below because we will do a review on that uh, and we'll try and get it out to you before before next week. It'll be up on YouTube. But this here, when you said get a slightly narrower board, I'm, I'm interested to know the, the, yeah. what, what your answer is going to be here. How much difference does one inch narrower board make? Is it massive or not much different, e.g. 21 down to 20 inch? It's, it's huge. Like, whew, it, it makes a big difference. Like even an eighth of an inch, as opposed to like a quarter or a half an inch, that, that, that makes a really big difference. Um, and purely that fact that you're saying a quarter of an inch, an eighth, an eighth of an inch can make that much difference. That is where your average, your average surfer can have pretty good surfboard knowledge but to down to an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, that's where I feel that you really need to then go and see a, go and see a shaper. It's, it's the difference between me trying to bottom turn and the boards and, and go up to the top of the wave and the board's too wide and I face plant, or I'm trying to bottom turn, I wanna go up to the wave and it's too narrow and I catch rail and I roll off the board. Or, a bottom turn and I go up to the wave and the board's just right and it does the job. So like um, taking your board, tell your shaper what the board's doing, how it's feeling and okay, tell the shaper how it feels in the bottom turn, in other words with speed how does it turn and how does it feel in the top turn when you're twisting and turning with no speed, mm. how does the board feel? Because it has to do two different types of turning. And when you've got speed, it mustn't slide out. But when you're going slow, it must release. So it's got to do two different jobs there. Yeah. Um, yeah, just going back to the waves in the UK. In the UK, the variety and types of wave is pretty varied. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would, yeah. 
hundred percent agree there. Um, the, 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 there are some amazing oh, waves. Have you ever seen uh, Castles in the Sky? It's such a good uh, movie. Okay, is it, is it, is it, is it here? So good. David Rastovich in Castles in the Sky. Yes, and if you have been in the Surf Hacks group for a long time, you would have seen how excited I got when Dave Rastovich was, was body surfing. Yeah. I almost want to just cut that clip out again just, to, just so we can watch it. It was amazing. I've probably got it on the iPad. But, uh, yeah, let's, if Dave Rastovich... Uh, oh! <laughs> Say what Ian said. We've got to read it for everyone. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on a minute. The the so how about look at Dave Rastovich in Castles in the Sky? We did that one last week, didn't we? I just haven't I haven't put it up on YouTube yet because it's one of the ones that we're saving. Oh yeah, we did. We did. We've already done Dave Rastovich. So yeah. Dave Rastovich is already done. It is already yeah. done. I can so, give. So I we can do that this week almost if you want. We or next week. we can do it. If we can, as long as we get enough people go go over to YouTube and subscribe, then uh, then we can. I don't know what we're on at the moment, so uh, I, I will check that. And but yeah, I just want to say just about the, the the waves in the UK. Last time I went back there, I, I've been living here for twelve years now. When I was and when I surfed back in the UK, I I knew lots of really cool little spots that you'd park up down a country lane and you'd walk over like one field here, and then you have to go over the stile and then over another field, and then you'd you'd climb down this cliff and. I tried to find those. <laughs> I tried to find those spots when I went back there last year. I was like, I've got no idea where I'm going. I just got ended up getting lost down country lanes, and I've lost the ability to reverse now because I don't have any country lanes over here. So it was uh, it was very interesting. So is this one? The <laughs> yeah. Okay. One last thing. Here we go. That's it. I'm coming to the Gold Coast after lockdown to be trained by Clayton. And they put the tent up in your garden. <laughs> I I have no problem. I don't know if I put it up in my garden. I'll put up the tent up on the beach for you, but. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Look, when when we can all travel again, by all means, um, we we can um, we well, you'll, you, you'll be doing trips again, then. Yeah, hopefully. Go, Definitely. Doing trips and then just jumping on a trip to, with us. To really amazing waves, and uh, there's look the surf hacks group is pretty big. Uh, I would ask that you don't all come to the Gold Coast at the same <laughs> time. <laughs> You're gonna make it really crowded. It's crowded enough as it is. Um, but yeah, oh. we, we, we love you and we would love to see you over here. But as I say, just not all at once. It would just be, uh, uh, yeah, very busy. Anyway, that is, that, that is it from us this evening, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like, share this video around, tell other people about this community, head over to YouTube, make sure that you subscribe and also let us know what has been your biggest takeaway from this video. Share it inside the group. Share any other takeaways that you have next time you go out for a surf. But until next Wednesday, that is it from us. Have you got any final words there? Or you, you I don't have a, like a signing out, so it's just like, thanks for tuning in, guys. Appreciate we you watching. We don't have a sign out. This is going to be our sign out. 